I'm not ashamed. What does Jesus mean when he says, I am the bread of life? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of John on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to John chapter 6. We're going to be reading from verses 30 to 40. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, John chapter 6, beginning of verse 30. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus has fed the 5,000. He has walked on water. He is now in Capernaum the day after he did those things, and the people whom he fed asked him why he left him. He told them that they didn't seek after him for the signs that confirmed his message. They sought after him because they wanted to be fed again. They asked him what they must do to work the works of God, to which Jesus said they must believe in the one sent from God, which was him. Coming now to verse 30, their response to Jesus was, What sign will you perform that we may see and believe you? What work will you do? I find this amazing. The day before, Jesus had miraculously fed them. He had already performed many miracles not written in this book among them, and yet they wanted more. They said that their fathers received manna from heaven while in the wilderness and proceeded to refer to Exodus 16 verse 4 to prove their point. Jesus countered by telling them, that they didn't receive the bread from heaven. Is Jesus contradicting Exodus 16.4, which said that God would rain down bread from heaven? No, but he is again distinguishing between the physical and the spiritual, just as he did in chapter 4 with the living water with the woman at the well. God sent them bread from heaven, but the bread that came down wasn't made in heaven. God's power to provide it and the bread came from heaven, meaning the sky. However, the true bread, which comes from heaven, was now being given to them, now in the person of Jesus. This bread was better than the manna from before, because although the manna sustained the people's physical life, they still ended up dying. However, the true bread would bring spiritual life, and that life would never end. Now the people, just like the woman at the well, wanted the living water, and they said that they wanted this bread always. Like the woman, I believe that these people misunderstood that Jesus wasn't talking about physical bread, as is evident from their response later on in the chapter. Jesus' answer is profound. He said that I am the bread of life, and he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. The reason why this saying is profound is not because the words are difficult to understand, but because what Jesus is actually saying is quite deep. Why is Jesus talking about bread? Because he just fed the people with bread the day before. The bread that he fed them with was physical bread that perishes. That's not the bread he was promising. He was promising spiritual bread, his words, which are the words of the Father. And if they ate that bread, then they would never hunger again, for this bread would completely satisfy them. But in stating that I am the bread of life, the true bread that has come down from heaven, Jesus was also claiming something else. He was claiming to be God. Recall back to Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, to God's conversation with Moses in the burning bush. 
Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now every time we read I am in Scripture, the person isn't claiming to be God. But the context here, with Jesus saying that he came from heaven, leads to the obvious conclusion that by saying that I am the bread of life, the bread that gives life, that he was saying that he is the God who gives life, the God the Jews believe in. This is the first time we see an I am statement in John, but as we see more of them, this conclusion will become clearer. Jesus, as the bread of life, was sent from the Father to do his will, and his will was that all the Father has given to Jesus would not be lost, but would be raised on the last day. It is also the will of the Father that whoever sees the Son and believes in him would receive everlasting life and will be raised on the last day, meaning the resurrection day. Now some like to grab onto this passage, and ones like it in John, and claim that one who believes in Jesus is saved and one can never lose their salvation before death. But that goes against passages in Hebrews, which clearly say otherwise. To that, they sometimes respond that in those cases, the person really wasn't saved to begin with. They only thought they were saved until they fell away. What a miserable and insecure position to be in, to not really know that you're saved. The scriptures tell us that we can know if we're saved. In fact, this passage in John tells us that. We need to believe in Jesus, which of course means to do what he says. Does that mean that the Christian will never sin? No, but the scriptures tell Christians to confess our sins to God and God will forgive those sins, 1 John 1 verse 9. If we believe in Jesus, we will do that and rely on his grace. But what happens if we don't believe in Jesus, either before becoming a Christian or after? Then we won't receive everlasting life. It won't be God's fault, though. His will, his desire was for us to be saved. It, the fault lies with us who rejected him. But if we walk in him by following the words of Jesus, we will never hunger again, and we will be saved. We'll continue with this, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 6, verses 41 to 59. As we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.